action meeting. Um, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order and we'll do roll call first. Um, Brenda Blitman is here. And James Birch. Here. And Doug um, Exton. Here. And Rod, Rod Wickstrom is absent. Um, Trevor Brown is absent. And then Ryan Colson. Here. And Jeremy Roush. Here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we've got one item of unfinished business. It's 2021-02577. And um, Joanna Burchett, Burchett. Um, I, I wonder if there's a motion from the commissioners. I move, or sorry, Madam Commissioner Chair. Commissioner Exton, <laughs> okay, go ahead. I move to table 2021-02577 CUMSP to the February 10th meeting. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Roush seconded. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Um, let the rec record reflect that all um, five commissioners voted in favor of tabling um, that item to February 10th to public hearing. We've got new business, um, 2021 um, 3100 sellers. Um, again, is there a motion from the commissioners? Madam Chair. Commissioner Roush. Madam Chair. <clears throat> I move to table item 20210022 CUMSP to the January 13th hearing. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We've got a second from um, Commissioner Colson. Um, any discussion? All those in favor of this motion, please say aye. Aye. And I'll say aye. Any opposed? Um, let the Records reflect that all five commissioners voted to table um, motion number 2021-02022 um, to the January 13th public hearing. So thank you very much. The next item on the um, agenda is 2021-02719 CU MSP. And I'll go to Ms. Sanders um, for the presentation. Thank you. Madam Chairman and Commissioners, um, this project is a conditional use master site plan for a contractor's yard with an 8,000 square foot shop within the Rural Preservation District. The applicant is Randy Bernstrom. So the site is on Cunamora and Pleasant Valley Road. Um, it is in the RP. There are no structures currently on the property. The application was transmitted. Um, we've received no comments in opposition to this application. Here's a copy of the site plan showing they are, are going to have a driveway, and it is going to the structure is going to be to the east side of the property. These are some of the elevations of the project and how the door, the bay doors are going to be. They're actually only gonna have one employee once in a while come drop off and pick up equipment. So there's not a lot of employees um, that will be on site. So the applicant and the owner, these are some of the conditions of approval. They have to have written verification from ACHD and Central District Health. They have to submit um, documentation of the parking space width and the construction of the ADA parking. The applicant um, can receive a building permit. They will need to have a final inspection with the county engineer and for zoning approval. Staff is recommending approval of the conditional use master site plan for the contractor's yard. And I'll stand for any questions. Thank you very much. Um, what questions do the commissioners have? What questions do you guys have? Um, I have one question. Um, what fire district is this in? And and because um, I, I didn't see anything about the fire district. Madam Chairman, it is not within a fire district. So we do contact the state fire marshal, and we also contact the sheriff's department. Okay. We receive no comment. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Um, any other questions? Okay, we'll go ahead and ask the applicant to come forward. And I, are they online or in the room? In the room. You'll give us your name and address, and then you've got 15 minutes to tell us anything you want. Uh, Randy Bernstrom, 6153 Portsmouth, Boise. So what, uh, just. Anything just, you want to talk about the project? This is your opportunity to tell us anything more about the project, or we can ask you questions. Oh, okay. Um, it's just an overflow yard for my construction company. I run my daily operations out of Garden City with my crews. So I just have a lot of extra tractors, semi-trucks that I don't have room for at my Garden City location. So this is just overflow storage. And the building is probably designed bigger than what I need it to, to store some of my more smaller pieces, some stuff that's a little more valuable indoors. It's kind of weather, w weather affected. Uh, but it, I have a lot of equipment that we don't use on a daily basis because we do a whole variety of projects. Uh, so, I mean, that's basically what it's for. Just, just some extra storage space. And well, well, thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and ask the commissioners if anybody has any questions. Go ahead. Madam Chair. Madam Chair, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Bernstrom, thanks for this project and, and coming tonight to your questions and, and present this application. I just had a couple questions. Um, first of all, I do appreciate the natural landscaping that you're going to maintain uh, uh, for your landscaping and not just letting the weeds and Russian thistle and everything else that grows out there. Um, were you present at the neighborhood meeting? And if you were, were there any comments that you took into consideration? Yes, I was present at the meeting and nobody showed up. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, have you had an opportunity to review the findings and conclusions? <clears throat> and are there any issues that you see or that you might have with them? Um, I, I did just review them right now. I reviewed them earlier also. But uh, the only question I would have is on the landscaping mm -hmm. because there's, I don't have a commercial well rights or mm -hmm. uh, irrigation well rights. So it's like you can only water up to a, a half acre with a, a residential well. So to, I can seed the property to natural seed, but that's, that's about all I'm gonna be able to do with the property because of the water, the irrigation situation. Okay. So, and that's what I propose to do and we'll seed the berm and everything. With the, you know, I'll get some natural seed from Fish and Game or something to just put out there. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? So we're going to ask some questions to um, Ms. Sanders, and then we'll offer you an, a chance to have any rebuttal after okay. that. Okay. Okay. So don't go away. Hang okay. out for a second. What questions do we have for Ms. Sanders? Oh, I sorry, I lied. Is there any public testimony? Anybody else that would like to talk about this? Okay, we'll go forward. Any questions for Mrs. Ms. Sanders? Any questions? I, I have a question. Um, the applicant mentioned the natural uh, landscaping, and has that been resolved? Is is it clear in the in the findings, um, or is that an area that's open that hasn't been resolved? Madam Chair, it, it actually has been resolved because they have asked for an alternative landscape design, and we understand that there's not water to water the entire area. He is proposing a berm and some natural vegetation, which is perfectly fine. We don't have a problem with that. We do want to see exactly where he's placing it. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Very good. And you get a chance to make any comments. Yeah, so the, the area of disturbance is really small because where we're, there's gravel on 99% on of where we're disturbing. So the, really the only area of impact is the berm surrounding the, the gravel yard per the contractor's yard code. So that's the only disturbance really that I'm even doing out there besides what was there when I purchased right. it. Okay, any more questions? So I think we're good. You can go ahead and sit down. Okay, and I thank think, you. Um, I'm gonna close the public hearing and then go ahead and let the commissioners talk. If there's a, somebody that wants to make a motion, you can go ahead and sit down. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Any, is a motion on the floor? 
Commissioner um, Colson. Yeah, Madam Chair, I, I uh, put a motion on the floor to approve it. So it's been moved that we approve um, the 2021-2719 um, motion, and, and that includes the findings of fact and everything else that is included. I don't, didn't look it up. Is there a second to that motion? Second that. And Commissioner Birch um, seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Okay, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So nobody was opposed. Let the records reflect that everybody voted for the motion and there was nobody that was opposed. Um, our next item, and thank you very much for coming. Our next item is 2021-02787, um, Rodney Evans, and then Mr. Danielson is gonna provide that um, project for us. Uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, project number 2021-02787 CU-MSB is a conditional use and master site plan application to expand an existing gravel pit in the Rural Preservation District. The property is located at 2500 West Amex Lane in Section 15 Township 2 North Range 2 East and consists of approximately 600 acres. The initial gravel pit was approved on 200 acres of the 600 acre property. You can kind of see on the slide here, kind of the area where that existing gravel pit is, kind of that triangular area. That's where the existing gravel pit is. And then the expansion of the gravel pit will be to the south of that uh, already disturbed triangle area. Operations within the expansion area include mining and extraction of sand and gravel, crushing and washing, and processing of sand and gravel, hauling and stockpiling. Structures within the expansion area include scales, scale house, storage shed, and portable restrooms. The potential life of the gravel pit is 40 years of material extraction. Staff is recommending condition of approval number 12, which limits the time of the gravel pit. The initial gravel pit has a similar condition. Uh, the condition number 12 states that the approval is good for 30 years from the date of the zoning certificate issuance and to operate the gravel pit for an additional 10 years past the original 30 years, the applicant will need to make a request to renew the gravel pit based on the conditions found in this approval, approval which the commission shall consider and act on. The operator of the, gravel, operator of the gravel pit has requested for the hours of operation to be 24 hours a day seven days a week in order to accommodate the increasing demand for night construction. As condition, if there's any outdoor lighting, uh, the outdoor lighting will require a lighting plan. It should be noted um, that another gravel pit operator has recently received approval uh, from the commission to operate a gravel pit from the northeast corner of the property. The applicant has requested a waiver from landscaping and screening requirements. Staff finds that the waiver is warranted because the gravel pit is in close proximity to other gravel pits or rangeland, and the reclamation plan will require the gravel pit to be revegetated after, the, after it is mined. In addition, the property is not located in an irrigation district. The property is not located within an area of city impact, therefore the applicable comprehensive plan is the AA County Comprehensive Plan. The future land use map designates the size rangeland, which lists seasonal grazing by domestic livestock or wild animals as a primary use. Once the size is reclaimed or reseeded, the use would not prevent the property from being utilized as rangeland in the future. As such, the gravel pit is compatible with the AA County Comprehensive Plan. The expansion of the gravel pit is also in compliance with AA County Code as it complies with the specific use standards for a pit miner quarry, along with the standards for a conditional use master site plan. We did not receive any uh, comments from neighbors on this application. The AA County engineer uh, requires a reclamation plan approved by the Iowa Department of Lands. In addition, the applicant is responsible for controlling fugitive dust. Key conditions of approval include the following. The applicant shall provide documentation that the Iowa Department of Lands has approved the reclamation plan. The applicant shall submit a phasing plan depicting the phases of extraction and reclamation. 
The applicant shall submit a fugitive dust plan. The operator of the gravel pit will need to continually manage the dust generated by the gravel pit by watering the extraction area and haul roads on a daily basis, and any outdoor lighting will require a lighting plan. Staff finds that this application complies with the A County Code and the adopted comprehensive plan, and I'll stand for any questions. Thank you very much. What questions do we have for Mr. Danielson? Um, Commissioner Birch? Mr. Danielson, I'm curious. It says in the findings that the commission will review the status of the gravel pit in 2.5 years. Tell me how that works. What the expectations are of the commission at that point in time? So what, So basically in two and a half years, it's one of the specific use standards for a, a gravel pit that requires a condition, conditional use application. So basically this allows the, the review allows the commission to um, kind of see how the gravel pit's been operating in its first two and a half years of existence. So if there's any problems then the commission has the ability to address those problems at that public hearing where we have the review. Um, so typically how the review would be conducted is we'll notify other agencies that were performing this review, and we'd also notify the neighboring property owners within a thousand feet of the review as well. Um, and so that it would allow us to have the opportunity to receive feedback from those agencies and neighboring property owners. And then, th then we'd have a, a, a public hearing in front of you to go over uh, that review and see if there's anything that needs to be addressed, whether it's through the conditions of approval. You would be usually through the conditions of approval. Um, if there's a, a changes to the conditions of approval or addition of conditions of approval that need to be uh, taken to address any concerns that were raised in that review. Does that answer your question? Or go ahead. Well, kind of. Questions. Is that a one-time event, the two-and-a-half-year review? It, it is a one-time event. Um, with conditional uses, um, you know, we always have the ability to, you know, if, if, there, if somebody is not complying with a conditional use, there's always, uh, we always have tools in our zoning ordinance that address that. So um, if, if a, somebody's not complying with their condition, no use. We have co enforcement that we can enforce, you know, that uh, applicant to comply with the conditions of approval. And we also have the ability um, in our code to revoke a conditional use in case uh, an applicant or owner is not complying with the conditions of approval that were set forth. So uh, I have two more questions. I'll just ask them both at once. So the applicant has already been through this process already with respect to the 200 acres, correct? That is correct. Is there any red flags that were raised at that time? Not yet, um, and, and we probably will in the next few months. We'll probably I think we're about two and a half years from that uh, gravel pit having its two and a half years. So we'll probably be in the next couple of months, probably have uh, next few months, probably having a review on that pit before you. But I've not been. We haven't received any complaints on that existing pit. And then the last question I have is, the if this is approved tonight. This will not be of the same term as the 200 acres. This is 120 acres. The 200 acres that would be for a shorter period. If the applicant says, I want them to be coterminous, is there a way for that to happen? Well, well, the 30 years from the first, uh, for the first gravel pit started when we issued out their uh, zoning certificate, which was about two years ago or a little over two years ago. Um, the 30 years for this gravel pit would, will be when we issue out the zoning certificate for this uh, expansion gravel pit. So there will be a difference of approximately two to three years. Yes. The two of them. Okay. Any other questions? Questions? Go ahead. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, Mr. Danielson. So uh, my question was just in regards to the operations time that they requested 24 hours and then in the... Uh, Findings, what I'm seeing is that we're going to limit from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., is that correct? Let me review those findings here real quick here. Comments from uh, Luke Roberts, Associate Ada County Engineer, that the comments, uh, earth moving equipment operation hours shall be limited between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. So is the earth moving operation distinct from any other, ta <clears throat> any other task on a gravel pit? I mean, I, f I feel like that's 
the majority of the operations. So those were, um, so that was basically a recommendation from the Associate A County Engineer. So um, that's something that, that the commission can take into consideration. Um, since the applicant has requested, you know, 24 hours of operation, I did not put a, a condition of approval that limits their time between the, that time that the Associate County, AD County Engineer had stated. Okay. So with the conditions of approval, there's nothing that um, limits the, the time that they can operate since they would like to operate 24 seven. Any more questions? Madam Mr. Chair. Exton. Uh, Mr. Danielson, so I was just curious what happens if they do get approved for the extra 10 years, what happens after that 40 years? Can they reapply for to continue the gravel pit again, or is it just a like closed book? So with our condition, the proposed condition of approval for number 12 is, is basically we allow them with this conditional use to, mm -hmm. to go up to 30 years. Um, so if they do have additional, t uh, obviously extraction you know, in the area, they would apply for a new condition use application. And so they would probably, at that stage of, of time, they probably would have a, a better estimate of how much more gravel would be, or and sand would be within that pit. And then they could tailor their new conditional use to reflect the, the timeline that they anticipate, um, you know, going beyond the 30 years. Thank you. Any other questions? So I, I've got a couple questions. I want to follow up on the hours of operation. And I totally understand that we need um, lots of gravel during the summer to get roads done. So I'm totally supportive of that. But I know that we had one come before us, and I thought um, there was some discussion about limiting it to a certain number of days, or was it just like this one, the other one that we had, where it was unlimited, that you could run 24-7 the whole year? So it, it, I haven't worked on a, a condition use for a gravel pen in, in probably about, oh, about two years. So it might have been a, another gravel pit that another planner had worked on. Because I know, I think Diana had worked on the one that's to the northeast of this property. Um, I know one of the ones I worked on, which is one to the south, which is the Knife River one. I know that one, you know, did get approved to be 24 seven. So there's one that's across the street that I worked on about two and a half years, well, actually about five or six years ago. I remember that one in particular we the commission did allow uh, for them to have night operations so there are some other pits within this area that do have night operations okay i just wanted to know if we were being consistent and so then the, my next question is i miss the fire district question um this, so where does it land because i know there's a lot of no man's land out there yeah. so so madam chair this property um is not within a fire district um so when you're not within a fire district, basically the, the Iowa State Fire Marshal is kind of the, I guess the the fire fighting kind of, um, I guess high, top of the hierarchy, um, and then uh, they sometimes will delegate their responsibilities to the sheriff's office. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I think we're ready to visit with the applicant. Um, you're in the room. You'll give us your name and address, and then you'll get 15 minutes to tell us about your operation. Madam Chair, Commissioners, Brent, um, we, we find all the conditions acceptable, but the hours was our one concern. I noticed in the Exhibit A conditions of approval, they weren't noted, but in the staff report and then the, uh, the approval with conditions page that they are um, our existing pit that we had approved two years ago is 24 seven. And with the growth of the valley right now and the state and county road projects that have to happen year round, um, there's just a demand for gravel, especially with nighttime operations. So we'd really like to request that, that 24 seven operation times and hours. Um, that won't happen all the time, but it's just when it's, those road projects are dependent on nighttime construction timing. So. I would like to ask you just to give us your name and your address. Oh, I'm sorry. So that, so that Rodney we Evans. We got 14, the official part I'm then. so used to doing that. You're Rod, uh, go Rodney ahead. Evans, 1450 uh, West Bannock, Boise, Idaho, 83702. Thank you. So any more comments? Are you No, that's it. That's questions? our only concern okay. at this point. Go ahead. Do you have, do you have questions? Anybody? Any questions? Go ahead. Anybody else? Madam Chair. Go ahead. 
uh, Mr. Evans. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, for the, uh, being here this evening. Um, my first question, uh, were you present at the neighborhood meeting? Was there any discussions, uh, con comments, concerns that, that any of the neighbors no, brought No, I was forth? present and the owner of the gravel pit, developer of the gravel pit was there, Mr. Amadon. Uh, we had no visitors, there were no questions. Um, if you know that vicinity, it's, it's, there's a lot of gravel pits out there and virtually no other uses within a few, well, half mile of our, of our site, so. And then uh, on the um, condition of approval or, um, and findings, that you, you stated that you've, you've read them and that you're, they're acceptable with the exception of the hours of operations being 24-7. Yeah. Being yes, yes. We expect to, to uh, satisfy the phasing, uh, the, the dust mitigation plan, and, and everything else noted. We're right now currently having our reclamation plan approved by IDOL, so we should see that in a couple weeks and be able to get it back to Ada County. So. All right, well, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? So I think we're, we're good. We're gonna ask Mr. Danielson some questions and ask for the, any other questions and then you'll get a chance to come back. Okay, great, so thank, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience or online who would like to make a comment about this project? And I don't have anybody signed up, so I think we'll go back to questions from Mr. Danielson. And I'll just go ahead and ask you to kind of tell us about what the paperwork matches up on the 24-7, that it seems to be a question that we all have. So Madam Chair and, and Commissioner, so basically with that finding, um, so basically with the, basically I had put the agency comments that we had received, so I kind of summarized those. And so basically where it talks about the hours of operation, our county engineer and our associate county engineer have some standard, you know, rec, you know kind of boilerplate, kind of template language that they utilize in their agency response. And so the hours that they had mentioned are, are something they typically put in, in every letter that they provide to us. And, and part of that is to kind of cons consider, a lot of times with that being a boilerplate template, there's maybe projects that are near other residences or you know, where people live nearby. And that would be a, a very appropriate standard to have if you have homes that are right next door or nearby. In this situation, because um, the area really is just other gravel pits and rangeland, um, you know, in my recommendation to you, I didn't include that as a condition of approval because I didn't think, uh, because based upon the area that's, you know, surrounding this proposed expansion and also what the applicant's proposing, I felt what the applicant was proposing was, um, was, was sufficient, adequate, because this area really is, is is either rangeland or gravel pits and that there's really no nearby residences that would be impacted by having 24 7 operation and so um, in the conditions of approval i didn't have a, a condition of approval that limited their hours of operation based upon the surrounding area and, and what they would like to um, pursue thank you is there any other questions from the commissioners go ahead mr birch so, Mr. Danielson, do I understand then that if we approve the finding, if, if we approve the staff report as drafted with the conditions of approval, that will give them the right to operate 24 hours a day. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So, I think we're going to offer the um, applicant an opportunity to make any additional comments. You're going to waive that. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close the for the public hearing and ask for a motion from um, a commissioner. Who would like to do a motion? Madam Chair. Commissioner Exton. Uh, based upon the findings of fact and conclusions of law contained herein and the testimony from the public hearing, I would like to move to approve project 20210287 CUMSP subject to the conditions of approval attached as exhibit A and the master site plan dated October 13th. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Colson seconded the motion. Um, any discussion? Okay, I drive through that area and I know there's a lot of gravel pits and I know we need gravel to build roads, so I'm, I'm in favor of it. Um, I'm gonna call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So the motion passes all five um, for it, so thank you very much. 
Our next item is 2021-38, I'm sorry, 2021-02832. Yugen Architecture, and we'll go ahead and Mr. Danielson will provide that report. Uh, Madam Chair Commissioners, project number 2021-02832 CU-MSB is a conditional use and master site plan application for the Eight County Landfill to construct a 13,272 square foot building for administrative offices and a vehicle repair shop along with a future 6,000 square foot canopy for a covered recycling area in the rural residential district. The property is located at 10319 North Siemens Gulch Road and consists of approximately 320 acres. The hours and days of operation are Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 p.m. from 8, excuse me, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. At the largest shift, there'll be 31 employees with the total number of employees being 36. The applicant is requesting an alternative design for the parking area to forgo bicycle parking. Staff finds that the alternative design for going bicycle parking is justified as the landfill does not allow bicycle or pedestrian access. The applicant is requesting a waiver from the landscaping and screening requirements. The request for the waiver is justified because the new building is out of the line of sight from Siemens Gulch Road and is well within the landfill property. Since the structure has a footprint greater than 10,000 square feet, it must be designed such that the building mass and bulk are distributed. The structure has been designed such that building mass and bulk are distributed as there is a variation in the height of the structure that exceeds five feet along with a variation in roof line from the repair shop to the Ministry of Offices. The property is not located within an area of city impact, therefore the applicable comprehensive plan is the AA County Comprehensive Plan. The comprehensive plan designates the site as public, quasi-public, which designates facilities needed for essential public services. As the proposed administrative office, repair shop, and canopy will be utilized by the AA County Landfill, to provide an essential public service to the residents of AA County, the application is compatible with the AA County Comprehensive Plan. The proposed use is in compliance with the AA County Code as it complies with the findings of fact for conditional uses and master site plans and the specific use standards for a public or quasi-public use. Uh, there is no agency objections uh, to this application the key condition of approval is that the applicant will need to obtain a building permit for the structure. Staff finds that this application complies with the A County Code and the A County Comprehensive Plan, and I'll stand for any questions. Thank you very much. What questions do the commissioners have? Commissioner Birch? Yeah, Mr. Danielson, just a question the applicant could answer, but this is the county-owned landfill, correct? Who is Slichter Ugrin Agriculture or Architecture? So, Slichter, you, so, um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Birch, um, this is on property that, that is owned by A County, so this is the A County landfill property. Uh, Schlichter Ugrin Architecture is the architect that des designed the building. And so, they are um, kind of the, the architect and project manager um, for this project. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Madam Chair. Commissioner Roush. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, Mr. Danielson, I just had a question regarding the application. So it's just for this administrative and repair shop facility. It does not include the uh, proposed future 6,000 square foot recycling center. Is that correct? It includes both. So basically the, the Ministry of Office and the repair shop will be built first. So that's kind of the first phase of the project. And then the second phase of the project would be the 6,000 square foot canopy over the recycling area. One more question. Go ahead. Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, Mr. Danielson, so then uh, can you clarify for me when a, a phasing plan would be required and, and why it wouldn't be in this one? Um, maybe we could probably have the applicant could probably give a um, kind of understand kind of when the, the phasing is going to be. So I don't think they have a, an exact timeline of, of when the recycling canopy will be constructed. And so what this approval will do is this will, approval will recognize that, you know, we'll have the, that the building's been approved as part of the master site plan. And so when they're ready to uh, proceed with the canopy, then 
all they would need to do is would be to obtain a building permit and zoning certificate from us to start the construction of that structure. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? So I, I think we're ready to hear from the applicant. You'll give us your name and address, and then you'll get 15 minutes to sell us on, sure. sell us on a building. Hello, uh, Tom Otte, O-T-T-E, uh, address 10300 Siemens Gulch Road, the Ada County Landfill. Uh, we're asking to build our combined operations and administrative building. Uh, it's about 13,000 square feet. As you may or may not be aware, uh, as of October 1 last year, we took over our push and pack operations, so our uh, staffing really increased dramatically, and we'd like to be able to have all of our staff under the same roof to kind of increase the team building activity and make it so people really know what's going on. We also want to have the building be more centrally located to the scales so that people understand where to go. Oftentimes people will stop at our current admin building and say, where do I dump this trash? And so we say, just keep going up the hill. In, in addition to that, our covered recycling area, there isn't currently a, a phased plan. Our goal at the landfill is to constantly be a solution provider to all cities within Ada County and the unincorporated areas. And as the demand for recycling increases, we want to be able to have an area that people find welcoming and are, and are incentivized to use to do their recycling. And I will stand for any questions. Thank you very much. What questions do you have? Go ahead, Commissioner Roush. Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Audi? Yes, sir. Awesome. Um, first of all, thank you for being here this evening. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, on the um, just foregoing the, the bikes, yeah, I, I know that, um, oh gosh, and the, the name of the road's going to slip my mind, uh, the main, not highway, at the bottom of the hill there, below your admin offices now. I know that's utilized oh, by a Siemens lot of bicyclists. Yeah. My question there is, is, do you have employees that currently bicycle to work and, and would benefit from bicycle parking? We did. We don't any longer. We only okay. had one, and he is no longer with the land. Okay. Would that be an exception for an employee who was biking to work to be able to access this facility if they so chose? They'd be able to access it. We just wouldn't have bike racks outside. They'd secure their bike within the building. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Then I would like to introduce Chad Schlichter, our and our architect, who can answer more questions about the building itself. Okay, thank you very much. You give us your name and address, and then you can tell us about the building. Okay, I'm Chad Slister, Slister Ugren Architects. Um, 415 South 13th Street here in Boise. Um, do you want me to plug this in? I can bring it, so if it's the same ones that you gave yep. me, I can bring those up. Okay. okay, probably just the elevation is, or okay. the perspectives, just because they're updated. Um, I think uh, Tom did a good job in presenting. Uh, if you have any more technical questions, I guess. Uh, the one thing that Brent's pulling up is the, ele the perspective that you saw that was black and white. Um, we have that rendered and made a few modifications, a few improvements, um, just a different look. You're not gonna see it unless you're up past the scales at the landfill, but do um, you have any qu technical questions for me? Any questions? Go ahead, Commissioner Roush. Madam Chair, uh, not so much technical questions, and I, I apologize, I missed, I missed with Mr. Doty, so I'll ask you, Audie. Um, were you present at the neighborhood meeting? If you were, were there any comments, questions, concerns that were taken into consideration? Uh, I was present, and we had two neighborhood meetings, and nobody showed at either one. Okay. And then my other question is, uh, have you had an opportunity to review the findings of fact, conclusions of law? Yes. And any issues, concerns that you'd like to bring to our attention? Nope. Everything is as we requested. So thank you. Thanks. Go ahead and... All right. Thank you. Do you want to... Is there anything you want to tell us? Or just uh, oh, on here, I see this now. Yeah. That's just a, I wanted you to see what it looks cur like currently versus what, what was proposed at the initial submittal in a rendered form. So we've added a little bit of entry presence to it. It was pretty flat before. Uh, we've had what was appeared to be a, a masonry base, uh, which we've just gone to all metal, mostly for cleanliness and things like that. Masonry likes to you know, get cobwebby and things of that nature. So trying to keep it clean and uh, as, as we can for the uh, landfill folks. So 
I'm interested in finding out more about the canopy. Is it like that a concrete slab with with uh, the canopy, or, is there, or is it the canopy is actually not immediately adjacent to this. You're okay. talking for the if you want to go back to the, the sure. site plan. It's actually um, what would you say it's come a couple well, hundred yards. Well, yeah. So yeah. That's the proposed canopy location. The building location is actually to the lower right. So what is the canopy like? Uh, that is actually a different phase that we're not contracted for okay. at this point. So the, the building was uh, advertised through the county as a design build. We actually are working under Radix construction. And so the canopy is not a part of our contract work, but it is something that is being proposed for the master site plan. Okay. Commissioners. Thank you very much. Any yeah. other questions? I don't think we have any more questions. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience that has um, information for us or wants to make a comment about this project? And I don't see anybody in the audience or online. So we'll go ahead and questions from Mr. Danielson. So Madam Chair, um, did so the drawings that um, that Mr. Uh, Ugreen or uh, uh, Chats had brought up would be a late exhibit, which would be exhibit number 32. So let's re um, let the minutes reflect that exhibit 32 was added. What questions do we have for Mr. Danielson? I'll, I'll just go ahead and ask you, do you know what the canopy, more information about that, or is that just really just a spot it essentially is just a spot for you know i think you know obviously with with government you know there's plans you know to do things so obviously we have plans for capital improvements and, and the landfill would be the sa same situation where there's capital improvement plans that they have and then depending on on budgeted funds in, in upcoming years that would determine when you know that structure would get built um, and so obviously the main focus is, is getting the repair shop and the Ministry of Offices built first. And then in a few years after that structure is built, then that canopy would then be constructed. So with master site plan, we wanted to see as, as planning staff kind of the entire big picture of, of what the landfill is proposing to build at this site. And so that's why we wanted them to include the canopy because they know in the future they want to build this canopy and it just made sense to add this to this you know application that way they just had to go ahead and do one application instead of five years from now coming in and say okay we now we want to build this camp and we have to go through this uh, conditional use master site plan process again so it just helps us to see kind of the relationship and the bigger picture between the Ministry of Office and the canopy, um, and it just helps to kind of get that big picture viewpoint of, of what this centralized area of the landfill is going to look like. And so I'll ask a follow-up question. As, as the applicant decides to do that, they would bring that application through, um, not through us, but through your department, or somebody to review the site, you know, the building plans, and I mean, there's, yeah, so, there's other people that do approval yeah, processes. Yeah, so any structure so. that's gonna be built is, we'll need to get building permits. So yeah. when we when building permits are issued in any county, there is a, a planning review that occurs with the building permit. So when you when somebody applies for a building permit, we also issue a zoning certificate at the same time we issue out the building permit. So the zoning certificate's kind of where that planning review takes place. So a staff planner will go ahead and take a look at the site plan that's submitted with the building permit. And we make sure that the structure that's going to be built meets all the A county zoning ordinance you know, requirements. So that's like setback requirements, lot coverage, et cetera. In this situation, when they, the landfill comes back to build the canopy, we'll go ahead and we'll take this master site plan and we'll make sure that, okay, that the canopy that the, that the building permit is referencing is in the exact location that it shows on the master site plan. So we'll also look at the master site plan and make sure that the Ministry of Office and Vehicle Repair Shop is in the exact location that was approved in this master site plan. Okay, thank you very much for explaining that. Any other questions? 
Um, I think we're going to allow the applicant. If you have any more final comments you'd like to make, you're, you're good. Okay, I'll, I'll look to um, close the public hearing and then look for um, any information or a motion from a commissioner. Commissioner Birch. I move that based upon the findings of fact and the conclusions of law contained in the staff report and the testimony from this public hearing, the commission approve project number 202102832 CU-MSP subject to the conditions of approval attached as exhibit A and the master site plan dated October 22nd, 2021. Thank you very much. Um, there's been a motion to approve this project. Is there a second? Second. It's been seconded by Commissioner Rausch. Um, any comments? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Just wanted to say I think it's smart to bundle the two projects together just to make it more streamlined and also very minor, but I also liked how they included the little patio area outside for what I would assume to be the employees. Thank you. Great comments. What other comments do we have? Um, I'll go ahead and call for the motion or call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'll say aye. Any opposed? And so let the minutes reflect that all the commissioners, five commissioners voted for this project. Thank you very much for coming tonight. So our next um, item is Ada County, um, 2021-02789. And Mr. Moore is gonna provide us some information. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, Commissioners Brent Moore with Ada County Development Services. Uh, before you is a comp plan amendment to adopt the Ada County Transportation Action Plan. Now, this plan was born from the county's desire to play a more active role in transportation planning and is intended to provide a policy framework that will guide the county in its future transportation decisions, strengthen coordination and planning with other agencies, and provide a more efficient planning review process. Here's a timeline of the plan and list of stakeholders who provided input throughout its development. A kickoff meeting was held in January, followed by targeted interviews in March and April, in which more specific feedback was received and drafts of the plan uh, were then developed and shared with stakeholders in June and July. In July and August, a summary of the plan was posted to our website and advertised through social media seeking additional comments and comments received uh, from the public and other agencies have been incorporated into the final version, which is before you tonight. Uh, the plan articulates Ada County's role in transportation planning. Uh, while ACHD and ITD have ultimate control of public roadways in Ada County, uh, there are many opportunities for the county to coordinate with these agencies, as well as Compass and VRT in making future transportation decisions. Uh, and there are also opportunities to work with the cities as well uh, within the areas of impact uh, on projects that affect the unincorporated residents and unincorporated residents of Ada County. Uh, the plan also provides an overview of the transportation framework in Ada County and other data related to transportation, such as traffic volumes, population densities, uh, projected growth, pedestrian bicycle facilities, and crash locations. Uh, you'll notice in the appendix of the plan, there are a lot of maps uh, showing all kinds of uh, different uh, statistics and uh, transportation related data on the county. Uh, five primary goals with accompanying strategies and actions have been identified in the plan to guide the county going forward. I'll just go over those briefly. Uh, the first goal includes strategies regarding education and outreach. At one of our meetings, a neighborhood association mentioned how hard it can be sometimes to know who has jurisdiction over what uh, when a development comes before them for review. Uh, just some more information on is this ITD, ACHD, county, city, uh, who should they direct their comments towards. It also calls for increased collaboration with the cities and other agencies uh, regarding project prioritization and on large developments. Uh, so we like to communicate with the cities more on transportation projects that again would benefit both of us, uh, mutually beneficial to the cities and county that we could team up on and support. Uh, 
A second goal includes strategies to streamline the project review process, align development review with plan goals, and collaborate with ACHD on development conditions. A third goal includes strategies to prioritize transportation projects significant to unincorporated Ada County. Uh, mentions uh, submitting letters of support to projects other agencies are working on that would benefit the county. We've done this a little in the past, but I would like to do more of that. It also calls for adopting the city's trail and pathway plans for use within the areas of impact. Uh, we've actually done this for Meridian and Garden City this past year and hope to do it with more of the cities in the coming year. So uh, this helps if there's a development somewhere where a city's proposing a pathway, uh, we can do things like require an easement when an application comes in, uh, things like that, so a trail can go there in the future. Also calls for preserving right-of-way and easements along roadways for future multimodal facilities. And one we're looking forward to is uh, developing an Ada County Trails and Pathways Plan. Uh, so the cities have them within their areas of impact, uh, but we'd like to create a trails plan for the unincorporated areas outside uh, the city's areas of impact and also create a trail and pathway user group for the trails and pathways outside the areas of impact. Uh, fourth goal includes strategies regarding the support of public and other alternative forms of transportation, transition to green transportation infrastructure, and identification of wildlife and open range corridors. And the fifth includes strategies to support new traffic and mobility technology applications and to collect and share additional countywide data on our department's website. A list of priority corridors was also developed for the county considering such factors as traffic volumes, a location of projected growth, crash data, bike facilities, transit routes, commuting patterns, and stakeholder input uh, with an overall emphasis on unincorporated Ada County. So in summary, Staff is recommending approval of the plan as we believe it will provide a helpful tool to guide the county in its future transportation decisions. Uh, this concludes my presentation and I will stand for any questions. Thank you very much. What questions do the commissioners have? Any questions? Any questions? Madam Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Roush. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, thank you for the presentation. So. My understanding is is this transportation action plan is to be utilized similar to a comprehensive plan or in conjunction with the comprehensive plan or any future uh, developments from that based on um, this body's lack of control over transportation specifically since that's given to another another entity is that is that correct Mr. chair commissioner that's that's correct. This will be adopted as part of the comprehensive plan, kind of a, an attachment to our comprehensive plan, okay. just with the emphasis on the transportation decisions. Okay, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Moore, I have one more question. So, you know, how uh, my question is then, how does this impact Ada County Development Services in in information? Is it a pushing and staff are, are expected to keep an eye out for notice of public comments or outreach from other agencies and to provide feedback or is it mandatory that we provide feedback on some of these decisions or who's you know who's who's responsible in, in owning that input into these agencies from Ada County uh, Mr. Chair Commissioner it is I would say a guiding document so it is uh, there are strategies and, and actions outlined uh, to additional Again, it talks about holding additional meetings with cities and yeah. uh, just providing more input on on decisions, uh, communicating more with ACH, ACHD Compass. Uh, these agencies uh, request input throughout the year from the cities and counties. Yeah. And it's just a guide to help us uh, become more involved. When we do write letters of support or support projects, uh, we, we generally uh, request that of the board to see if that's something they want to support. Yeah. And we've done, I said we've done a little bit of that in the past with the cities and ACHD, but we'll, if there's a particular project we want to support, we'll get board support first before we submit a letter from them. Okay. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Madam, Madam Chair, to follow up on that, um, Commissioner Roush, so 
planning is compromised of really, or comprised, not compromised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you're comprised of really kind of two sub teams, um, community and, and regional planning, which is where Brent and okay. Stacy Arrington come from, and then our current planning division. And so, day in and day out, um, Brent and Stacy are coordinating with all of our partner agencies and jurisdictions on issues like transportation. This is really for them, kind of like their here's our priority yep. list of things we're gonna what we want to talk about, what we're going to try to get involved with, that sort of thing. But it also does, you know, you will see um, comments from, from the TAP, as we're calling it, filter into current planning application reviews. You'll likely see language from the TAP in future applications saying, you know, this project is in support of goal X whatever from the TAP as it provides a pathway or an opportunity or something like that. So that's where you'll see it primarily here at the commission. So. Any other questions? Commissioner um, Burt. Yeah, Mr. Moore, what, what I've always thought was interesting was that there seems to be a lack of joint cooperation between Canyon County and Ada County. I mean, there's graphics in here that show how many people are coming from Canyon County to work in Ada County. and. And it's getting to the point where when you drive from Ada County to Canyon County, you no longer are driving through the country. Some of it's just driving into the city. And so I'm curious, what is being done to facilitate cooperation between the two of those counties? And, and right now, it's just really those two. I mean, Elmore County is kind of out there, Emmett's down the hill, but there's talk about major development over in Mayfield in Elmore County. And so soon Elmore County could come into play too. Uh, I, I'm just curious. It seems to me that one of the main objectives ought to be to have the people from Ada County and Canyon County sit down and say what works for the Treasure Valley. Yeah. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Birch, that's, that's a good question. Uh, one good tool we have is uh, through Compass, uh, some of you may be familiar with our Compass, our metropolitan planning organization. Uh, so that is comprised of Canyon and Ada counties and all the cities in those counties. So we do, uh, we have one general meeting with them as staff. Uh, the elected officials also meet once a month. And there are a whole lot of other work groups and subcommittees where we are meeting with uh, the planners from uh, county and the cities in Canyon County uh, pretty regularly. Uh, with Elmore County, we're lucky in that uh, their planning director uh, just came from, just took that position from Ada County uh, about a year and a half ago. So we have a good relationship with their planning director. We do, uh, there's a JLUS meeting where we, uh, where we communicate with them every couple months. Uh, so we are meeting with them from time to time. Uh, additionally, there's a, another meeting Ada County actually set up uh, several months ago to, where we just invited all the the cities, county, we've actually invited Elmore County, Boise County, Jim County as well, Hawaii County, uh, just to meet every, I think it's every quarter. So every three months we all get together to just talk about planning issues. So uh, we are trying to increase our commu uh, communication with all the surrounding counties and cities and just kind of build relationships with them. Thank you very much. Does that answer your question? It does. It sounds like there's a lot going on that I didn't know about. Thank you. Any other questions? It looks like a lot of work. Um, is there any other buddy in the audience that has questions or has comments? That makes wants to make a comment because I'm assuming, like Ada County is the applicant, so you're the applicant and the person presenting it. Madam Chair, that's correct. Ada County is the applicant. Yeah. And present. So I don't have anybody else that wants to talk. Any more questions for Mr. Moore? Okay, I think I'll close the public hearing and we'll ask for um, a motion from one of the commissioners. Madam Chair. Mr. Roush. Madam Chair, based upon the findings fact and conclusions of law contained here and, and the testimony from this evening, the commission recommends approval of project number 2021-02789-CPA to the board. Is there a second? Second. Um, Commissioner Exton seconded the motion. Um, what comments do people have? 
Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Roush? For, first of all, I'd just would like to recognize that it uh, seems like a great document and, and looking through, it appreciated all of the statistics and information that was in it. The graphical representation, it was, you know, it wasn't a, like reading a textbook of graphs. It was, it was informational and I think will be, you know, if utilized and implemented correctly, it will be, be great to, to elicit more collaborative planning across our region. Uh, so I, I appreciate that and, and the staff's efforts there. Any other comments? Madam Chair. Go ahead. I just wanted to say I really do appreciate how the county is taking that effort to really look forward into the future and figure out how can we be in a good spot in 50 years rather than, okay, we need to play catch up again. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, all those in favor of this motion, please say aye. Aye. Say aye. Any opposed? And so um, project number 2021-02789. CPA for Ada County passes. Everybody voted for it, so five for it, and um, nobody against it. Thank you. So our next item is um, the minutes from the last meeting. Madam Chair. Commissioner Exton. I'd like to move to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner um, Coulson um, seconded the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I'll say aye, any opposed? So let the uh, minutes reflect that the minutes were approved. And now we'll go um, to hear about the Ada County Board meeting. Yeah, thank the you, Madam Board Chair. Board of Commissioners, so. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Um, real quick, I wish Brent Danielson was still here, but I would like to give a shout out to some planners who were recently promoted uh, within the division. Brent Danielson is now a senior planner for us, which is uh, recognizing his contributions. He's a major player for us, and we're really excited to give him um, that recognition through that promotion. And then Corey Brending is our newest associate planner. So you'll be hearing presentations uh, from her. And until we hire an assistant planner, you might have to deal with me on WebEx. So <laughs> it could be a long night. I'm just going to give you that heads up. But um, so aside from that, yeah, last night at the board, we had a few items. Uh, first item was a variance in an accessory structure off of Valley High Lane. Um, that was ultimately approved. It's a residential, uh, an egg building converted to a residential accessory structure. Uh, second item was a review for a conditional use permit for a go-kart track. Um, oftentimes we'll add reviews similar to the gravel pit that we discussed tonight for conditional uses to make sure they're working properly. This one uh, has popped up recently as something that we wanted to take another look at. That item was ultimately tabled, so we'll hear that next month with the board. Um, that was off of Chaparral Road. Uh, the third item was a time extension for a conditional use master site plan and accessory use uh, for a contractor yard off of Gowan Road. That was approved. Uh, fourth item was a comp plan amendment and zoning ordinance text amendment. Um, as you recall, you saw Meridian's Title IX agreement, the Area of City Impact Agreement, come before you and was recommended to the board. This was a cleanup effort to resolve some of the land uses associated with areas that the ACI boundary had been moved from. So this was a follow-up effort there. Um, we also did some cleanup work on a comprehensive plan for STAR that we needed to adopt by resolution. So that handled that. Um, and then we also adopted Garden City's new comprehensive plan and pathways plan um, and updated uh, their title line agreement as well. And then the final item was the zoning ordinance amendment that you heard before you, I think, was it last month? Um, and we had a long discussion about standard vehicle parking, which was really great. Um, we proposed some options for the board, and what they landed on was an update to that language for standard vehicle parking that references the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration standards for defining vehicles, specifically passenger vehicles, trucks, vans, things like that. So they liked looking towards a, you know, kind of a national... Uh, authority on defining vehicles, and that's what we're going to go with. So thank you for your comments on that. Um, everything else was ultimately approved. We had to table that to revise findings to reflect that new language. But um, that pretty much wraps up what we talked about last night. So if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you very much. What questions do you have? Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so that standard vehicle parking, what, 
I guess I could look it up, but it, it probably doesn't include like construction equipment. Is that pretty much kind of what it that ultimately was, excluded and semi tractors? That was staff's and, intent was to yeah. exclude the heavy equipment yeah. that you would see associated with the contractor yard. You know, we had a gentleman here earlier who mentioned some large equipment that he doesn't have room for in Garden City. He wants to put on this other lot. The intent of our ordinance update was to make sure that equipment is located more internal to the site and not parked right on someone's property line, but still to allow what I called standard vehicles. I'm gonna, that, yeah. that term's gonna haunt me for a while, but <laughs> basically, you know, employee parking, yeah. um, things like that, you know, client parking, pulling up to talk about a job. Like that can park where we've yeah. allowed cars to park in the past, but it's really that big stuff that we wanna get internal yeah. to the site. So that's, yeah, that, that language basically says if it meets those definitions for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, as a standard vehicle, including vans, things like that, then it can park closer to the property line, but the big stuff's gotta be inside, Perfect. outside, so. Yeah. Thank you. And that's Any other it. questions? And oh, just one more shout out. I haven't heard from anybody on the upcoming election for the PNZ um, that is happening in January. So if you are interested in serving as our chair or even as the vice chair, just shoot me an email. If you have questions, we can talk about that process in terms of you know, nomination, all of that. So yeah, just feel free to reach out. So that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else for the good of the order? Okay, I think we're gonna adjourn the meeting and it's 7.08 and I think we all get gold stars for being done in 68 minutes. So have a great night. Thank right. you. Thank you.